Now for the real college football games, the playoff games. We'll start first with the Rose Bowl. That's the first game, first playoff game on, on Monday, on New Year's Day. Michigan versus Alabama in the Rose Bowl, the granddaddy of them all. I, you can't do a, the, it, make it more pitch, picturesque with the sun setting over the San Gabriel Mountains. Two blue blood programs in college football playing in the most iconic college stadium. And, you know, it, get, let's get into the game here a little bit. Um, Michigan's faced all sorts of adversity this year. They've played half the games, almost well, not, not with the bowl game. They've faced, played half of their games without their head coach. And they, you know, a lot of teams would, I don't think you find a team that is 12-0 with with that that though that type of adversity, especially the last three games of the year where they go on the road to Happy Valley, get a win. They beat Maryland on the a, a pesky Maryland team on the road. And then in your biggest game of the year, you go and beat Ohio State, who was also undefeated. The winner goes to the big to Indy. And Michigan has handled that throughout. That's it's is a very player led locker room. It's a senior led this team is hungry. They've been on a mission ever since they lost to TCU last year. Keys to the game, especially offensively, they need to run the ball. They need to be effective running the ball. They need to find it. Teams have been able to run on Alabama this year. You go back to that Texas game where Texas had the ball, got the ball with about eight and a half minutes left, and they did not give the ball back to Alabama. And it was all running, running plays. It sounds like J.J. McCarthy is finally healthy. It sounds like he's been beat up since the Purdue game, and it's been a lot worse than what it's been let out. You could definitely tell he wasn't himself the last few games. Um, and then when they get the ball in the red zone, I think both teams are going to be able to move the ball, but they need to come away with touchdowns, something that they haven't done in the previous two playoff games, especially last year early. They struggled to get they struggled early to get drives. in the end zone, and they ended up having to settle for field goals. And don't get cute. You don't need to be running a Philly Philly play on from the five. If if you have to take 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 the field goal, you have to take the field goal. Oh well. Trust your defense. Your defense has been good all year. Avoid the turnovers. JJ McCarthy's been good at that. Outside of the Bowling Green game where he threw three, he threw one against the Maryland game against Maryland, and that's been it. He's done a good job of taking care of the ball. Um, I I think the receivers are going to have to find ways to get separations. I think the tight ends are going to be big, being able to utilize the middle of the field. Um, Game plan wise, just keep the game plan simple. It felt like the last two years where they had all this time to prepare, they overthought and they overprepared. Keep it simple. Just let your guys go out, play fast, let them make plays where they aren't thinking all the time. Um, Do what they do best. And then, you know, offensively, the offensive line hasn't been what it's been. These last, the last two years where they won the Joe Moore award. Um, but they've had, and with their best offensive lineman out, um, hopefully this time off has given them some time to gel and get that some continuity together where they're going to be playing at their highest level when that game kicks off on, on Monday. Um, and then defensively is they, they have to keep Jalen Milrow in the pocket. He, he, he is not comfortable there. He makes he is at his best. He makes his bread when he is out, when he things break down and he's able to scramble out. If they're able to keep him in the pocket, not let him extend plays where he can scramble and make a throw downfield or make a or use his legs to pick up a third down. Um, you know, if they're able to keep him in the pocket, I like I like Michigan's chances. And and the and the big thing is 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 get get pressure on him. And you know, he, he, he is prone to turn the ball over as well. Use that, utilize that pressure, force him to throw the ball before he wants to and get, get the ball out where he makes a mistake and turns it, turns it over. Um, and, and for me, you know, the bottom line is, is Alabama, they've, they've been inconsistent all season. They've lost to Texas. They struggle against South Florida. They uh, were the Milrow miracle away from not even being here and losing to Auburn. Auburn, they struggle with Texas A&M. Um, Michigan's, Michigan in this game is, uh, last I looked, was a point and a half favor, but it feels like everybody thinks this is Alabama. They're on a roll. This is the best 
Nick Saban's done a tremendous job, which he has. I'll give it to him. He has. But Alabama's been very inconsistent. They've played to the level of their competition. And I think a lot of the reason why people are picking Alabama is because of recency bias, where the last time they smit Alabama played, they went and beat the two-time defending national champion and dominated them. And where Michigan, they, I guess you could say they struggled against Iowa, but I think a lot of that was just where they were, they looked over at the sideline and said, oh, if we don't do anything stupid, I think Michigan got a little bit conservative in that game because they didn't need to do a whole lot. We don't turn the ball over. We don't make mistakes against Iowa. They are, that, that offense is not going to do anything. They can't beat us. Let's not give them any hope, any reason to believe that they should stick around. So I think they went conservative and said, you know what? Field goals are going to beat us. Let's just win the game, get into the playoff, and focus on whoever that four seed is, whether it was going to be Florida State or Alabama. But like I said, this game is going to come down to red zone execution. Who's going to come away with touchdowns? Who's going to come away with field goals? Who's going to force the team to make make a mistake where a team gets a short field and they, they can capitalize and get a touchdown or a field goal? Um, I, both, I, I I think Michigan and, um, you know, who's going to be able to do that? And Grant, I'll let you talk a little bit about this game. And then once you're done, we'll do our predictions for the game. Well, I, I think the one I agree, Dylan, um, with your take on the Michigan, Iowa game, you know, Michigan, you people could say they struggled, but going into that game, they knew they were, they were the better team. They knew they were going to beat Iowa. They came in with a pretty basic game plan. Hopefully nobody gets hurt. And uh, you know what? Hey, no matter how we win this game, we're going to win this game. We're going to be in. And when you come in with a basic game plan against Iowa with how fundamentally sound that defense is and how they have nothing to lose, you know, that defense is going to make you earn it. And then people are going to say, ah, Michigan struggled a little bit. You know, had it have been uh, a situation where maybe, you know, Cade and Eric and all these guys aren't hurt and Michigan needed some style points, it pro- that probably would have been a little different offensive game plan, but that's in the past and um, that doesn't matter, but we both agree there. I-, I think the biggest part in this game, Bill, is one thing you didn't touch on is the youth and inexperience on this Alabama offensive line against the speed and the depth that Michigan has up front. Don't get me wrong. This Alabama offensive line, they are huge. They are big bodies. They are going to be a problem next year and the year after that. But right now, they're young, 18-year-old kids, 19-year-old kids. They haven't – and the one time they played in a game like this against horses across um, – on the defensive front seven, they struggled against Texas. We, we left go in that game saying Texas was better on the defensive line and the offensive line in that game. Over the time from this season, has Alabama's young offensive line – have they grown up? Have they matured? Have they learned to play football at a high level against a defense that's going to come at you in waves? It's going to be hard for Caden Proctor and company to get used to one guy rushing the passer against them. You know why? Because Michigan's going to throw 10 dudes at you. There's going to be a variety of different pass rush moves. The games that Michigan can play up front that I think could be an advantage for the Wolverines. And if you remember two years ago when Alabama played Georgia in that title game, Georgia was moving their defensive linemen all over the place. Stunts left, stunts right, crosses, anything to really confuse this Michigan, this Alabama offensive line, they did that. Um, And if I'm Alabama's defense, I know you said people have been able to run on them this year. You can't let that happen. You can't let Michigan start to lean on you and lean on you and go forward. You know, people will be like, oh, Michigan only averaged 165 yards on the ground this year. Yeah, sure. You know, that's a low number. But when they run it for 200 plus the year before, of course, it's going to be a low number. But if you let Michigan, if I'm Alabama, if you let them dominate the line of scrimmage and just kind of lean on you where JJ and this passing game don't need to open up and they can just kind of run their basic concepts, it's going to be a long day. I think if I'm Alabama, you have to get Michigan in these third and plus passing situations. Just because, for the most part this year, Michigan hasn't need to be in that. And if they haven't had to be in that situation, you don't know how they're they're going to perform. 
JJ could light it up and he could look like a first rounder. Um, he could look like he did in the second half in that TCU game. And you know what? If that's the case and Michigan beats you like that, too bad. You know what? Hey, they're the better team. But if you let them dominate the line of scrimmage and just lean and lean and lean, it's it's going to be a long day. So Alabama's going to have to play the way they did against LSU, how Dallas Turner and company dominated. Um, and even the way against Georgia, really not letting them get that running game going for the dogs and that play action pass is, is going to be huge. So, yeah, it's, it's classic football here. If Alabama wants to win and compete in this game, their fronts on both sides of the ball are going to have to dominate because on paper, I give the edge to Michigan. Michigan has the better offensive line just because Alabama is bigger. doesn't mean they're better. And with the depth that Michigan has and how much they come at you up front, um, that's, a, that's an advantage too. So, this is going to be your classic, um, you know, football game. It's one in the trenches. It's I think it's going to be somewhat low scoring ish. I won't say a team yet, but I'll give you I'll give you a score, Dylan. I'll say twenty four to nineteen. Twenty four nineteen. Well, twenty four nineteen. We we are picking we're picking winners here, so you you have to choose who's winning. So you know, I went back and forth on it. Um, Earlier, kind of like what you said, after the SEC title game, I liked Alabama. But just because of that recency bias, I felt like, hey, you know, you watch Michigan struggle against Iowa running the ball. Um, I think Michigan's – Alabama's defensive linemen, they're bigger, they're faster, they're more athletic. Their linebackers are better. They're going to be able to slow Michigan down. But then you sit back and you look at the statistics throughout the year. Alabama's defense is middle of the road. They have a lot of youth. They're going to be good next year i just don't know if the, if their year is now and i i like jj mccarthy to have less turnovers than Jalen milrow and i just i i don't trust alabama's wide receivers to make a play when they need to make a play i trust michigan's skill players more so dylan yes for the third year in a row i'm pre- pre- predicting michigan to win and the cfb semifinal and hopefully the third time's a charm so we'll go Wolverines twenty four to nineteen. Yes, and I, I I like what you said, Grant. I like Jalen Milrow more or JJ McCarthy. I mm-hmm. trust JJ McCarthy more than I trust Jalen Milrow. I think he's been playing with fire, and I think Michigan has the yeah. defensive backs to to uh, take advantage of that and capitalize on mm-hmm. some of the those uh, mistakes that he makes. Um, and I I think that. Donovan Edwards has not had the year that he's thought he was going to have or Michigan thought he was going to have. And I think he, sh- he, he is a big game player and I think he's going to be a big part of this game plan. I think Blake Corum after being hurt last year, I think he is going to be rearing to go and ready to go because he hasn't gotten to play in this game. So I too, I'm picking Michigan. I think Michigan makes fewer mistakes. I think like you said, Grant, I think this is the year Michigan gets over the hump. They win 31-23, and we come back here Wednesday talking about how Michigan's playing for a national title. Bet. Mm-hmm.